Jenny of Jenny Stitches and thank you for joining me again on my channel today. So it is the end of July and I am back to show you what I've been sewing recently. Um, I'm off on my holidays next week so I've actually just been doing quite a bit of hurried last minute sewing to make sure I've got a few bits and pieces to take with me. So now is a good time to share where I'm up to um, following the last plans video that I showed you recently. Um, it's Thursday afternoon and the shop is actually open at the moment but it's very quiet. It's a rainy day here in Barrow and we're now at that time of year in the summer holidays where things go really really quiet. So everybody's off on the holidays, everybody's off doing fun stuff, the children are off so yeah it goes really quiet now. So hopefully I'll get this filmed without too many interruptions and I'll get on to showing you my makes. Okay so you can see that I'm surrounded by a forest of mannequins and things on hangers but I'm gonna start with the actual items that I'm wearing today um, and I'm gonna start by showing you my dungarees um, I'm gonna stand up and try and fit them in but I'm actually gonna pop a little bit of footage of me wearing them here for you and um, these are I'll just grab my patterns these are the Erin dungarees by Tilly and the Buttons um, and I have made the cropped length and I have used my wildflower linen and viscose blend. Um, I've wanted an excuse to use this fabric for ages. <laughs> um, I had it last summer as well and it's just lovely. It's a nice combination of two sort of very natural fibres so it breathes well but because it has got viscose in it it's not going to crease as much as 100% linen will. It is very lightweight so these are definitely a summer weight um, of dungarees. Um, I did think about going for the shorts but I figured I'd get a bit more wear out of the cropped version. It felt a little bit more work appropriate perhaps than the play suit version. Um, but yeah I absolutely love them. Um, <laughs> I'm so pleased with how they turned out. You can you line the inside of the bib um but i just opted to do it in a in the same fabric rather than anything that clashed with it I, I just felt like it was nice to just keep it consistent so i used around about just under three meters of this fabric to make these up and i've gone with the little tie straps here um in terms of sizing with this pattern i had read um online beforehand that um a lot of people found that it, they came up big. Where I'm at at the minute with sizing is I kind of sat between sizes, which is awkward. I would say I was like a UK size 13. So I'm not, 14s are a little bit too big, 12s are a little bit too small. So it's just here or there. My actual measurements would have put me in the size five. Um, but I kind of read the reviews and thought, no, I'm gonna go with the four. Um, most of my other Tilly and the Buttons makes are a four so I figured that I would probably get away with it and I was right there, there's actually just the right amount of ease they're comfortable to wear they're not tight in any place at all but they're not huge so I'm really pleased that I did size down um, I hope that's a helpful bit of knowledge um, so yeah really really happy with those um, I think they're a great project if you are new to sewing um, Tilly has it listed as for confident beginners but I think crucially with this pattern there's no fastenings there's no zips there's no buttonholes um, so I would say it's a good choice for a beginner and I do like the fact that you can make it up in different fabrics so you can make this in knits as well as wovens I think it would be really nice in a Ponte Roma so I'm thinking that yeah I'd, I'd like to revisit that one maybe in like a heavier cotton um like for in a plane maybe for sort of gardening and, and jobs and that kind of thing so I, I think that could be cute or denim a denim would be nice um so underneath that I am wearing um just a plain t-shirt this is the Stellan tee by French Navy now I'm not going to go too deeply into talking about t-shirts because I'm going to do a whole video about t-shirts at some point. Um, I've got a real bee in my bonnet about sewing t-shirts. I, I really enjoy making t-shirts but shopping for t-shirts is a nightmare. I can never get them to, they always shrink after I've bought them. I'm never really quite happy with the styles, with the fits. So 
I'm really interested in sort of trying out lots of different t-shirt patterns to see what works well for me and so I figured I might as well do that and review them for you so I will include this in it um, but the Stellan T is a free download from French Navy now the sizing is not amazing on it I've got to admit um, however it does come up quite baggy um, this was a size large um, yeah which I'm happy with this is my lilac cotton jersey um, I just love I just love my plain jerseys. I know I'm going to say that, but the quality is just gorgeous. They're, they're quite thick, you know, they're a good weight. Um, they're very, very soft. Just, if I was to pick this t-shirt up in a shop, I would think, oh wow, that's a great quality t-shirt and that's what we want. And because I've washed and tumble dried it before I cut it out, I have taken out the shrinkage already. So it will not end up short and wide because I've... <laughs> I've got some items, pyjamas in particular. Speaking of pyjamas, we'll talk about pyjamas. Um, I think I said in my last video that I wanted to make a couple of t-shirts um, using the Sew Over It Bilberry pattern, which I did. And I had some new cotton jerseys that are coming at the time, which unfortunately now are not in stock, but I will quickly show you the t-shirts that I made. Um, this is the Bilberry. It's a nice sort of crew neck fitted t-shirt and I'm fairly confident you will have seen me wearing this in another video and also um, on my other social media channels, Instagram and things. I've been wearing this on repeat um, week in week out since I made it. I love it. It's just simple, comfortable and shows off a print really, really well. Um, this was the Cottage Garden um, cotton jersey but unfortunately that has all gone now I'm afraid and I won't be able to get any more um, and then I had a metre and a half of the organic um, daisies cotton jersey and oh my goodness I tried so hard to get this back into stock there was one or two suppliers that I used that had it I just could not get hold of it so I'm really sorry about that <laughs> um, but yeah, I made the t-shirt again and you can see I just popped in a little Kylie and the Machine label there just so I knew where the back is and it's just a nice little finishing touch. But because I did have a metre and a half of this one, um, I actually made it into a pyjama set. So I had a little bit of extra. <laughs> so you can see these are the little pyjama shorts and oh my days, these pyjamas have changed the game and, <laughs> and I don't say that lightly because as I was just explaining about my Marks and Spencer's pyjamas about how they shrink and my husband's like always amused by this pair of really nice, quite expensive pyjamas I had I mean I think they were around sort of £30 and um, yeah, every time they went through the wash they came out shorter and wider to the point where they were like a big rectangle <laughs> so he always laughs about it so when I made these really really happy because they don't shrink um, and also because they fit so good and I used the Tilly and the Buttons Juno pyjamas so that's out of Make It Simple out of Tilly's third book and she has a set of pyjamas in the book with um, like a long full length pyjama with a cuff but she does have instructions and it's page 161 of how to turn them just into shorts so basically she goes through and shows you the adjustments that you need to make to your pattern piece just to cut them off into shorts um, and for me that uses just under half a meter of fabric and it's dead dead simple really really quick so they made the perfect partner to go with my t-shirt to make a little pyjama set and they've been great and the nice thing about that is that you cut the elastic based on your actual waist measurement so you can just pull that round and put it where it feels comfortable so they just fit perfectly um, and they don't ride up I find often with shorts like pyjama shorts that they ride up like really sort of not just between the thighs but the waist ends up coming really really high and I'm forever tugging them down these just stay where I left them and yeah that's priceless for me <laughs> so I also had um like a half meter off cut of the mini dots cotton jersey which is still in stock um so I will link that below and I just whipped up another pair last week so I thought half a meter is not a lot of use to anybody 
in the actual shop so I took that home and washed it and I've made another pair up and you can see I've popped another little label in here I think that's one of the labels from the Kylie and the Machine advent calendar which was kindly given to me by one of my customers so yeah I'm really pleased with those as well another really useful garment and it's nice because they're quick to make but it's also given me a chance to practice with my cover stitch machine um, and with this pair in particular I not only cover stitch the hems at the bottom but when you put the elastic in and you turn it over I think you can see on the inside um, I cover stitch that down and there's a few little nicks here and there they're not perfect but I'm really happy with them so yes lovely finish on those sometimes just the sewing of basics like that is really really satisfying it doesn't always have to be the complicated projects that bring you the most joy because it's the everyday bits and pieces and you know that you make that really build your handmade wardrobe and make it a practical way of living reach <laughs> okay so behind me um i will start with this one so i made this dress this is the sew over it betty dress it's a classic pattern in the sewing community i think the betty is probably one of lisa's original uh, sort of vintage designs from when sew over it first started um, it's a classic 50s inspired thing. I got interrupted again there. Um, so, whoops. So, yes, this is the Betty. And I made this dress for the Jubilee, for the Jubilee window. Um, and it's made in my red spotty cotton poplin. Um, the spotty cotton poplin comes in, I'm just going to count one, two, three, four, five colourways and I absolutely love it. This dress was a dream to make because for me it felt a bit like back to basics. Sewing with a cotton is just delightful, it presses nicely, it's easy to handle, it's crisp to sew um, and just sewing a very basic shape. Um, obviously I've got a fair bit of experience in that regard but it's just a lovely classic um, style but Essentially, I just decided to sew up a 14 and pop it on the mannequin. I didn't have any intentions of actually keeping it for myself. But I thought I would just quickly try it on before I popped it on the mannequin. And I was quite amazed to find that it fit me near enough perfectly just out of the packet. So I was really, really pleased. Um, so essentially, this has now become very much a wearable twelve for the Betty dress. I would definitely make it again. Um, and I had every intention of, of getting my hands on this dress when it came out the window but unfortunately it's faded quite badly um, in the window. I don't know if you can see the sort of lighter patches. Um, it was in the window for quite a long time. Um, when I moved into the shop I did pay for, um, I had film put on the windows to prevent the UV coming through and damaging the fabrics but it's not entirely infallible to be fair the guy that put it on did explain that and he said that red is the absolute worst color for fading so unfortunately this dress just was in there a little bit too long and has fade marks on it so I'm a bit unsure what to do with it at this stage I don't know whether to go and try to get some red fabric dye because it is 100% cotton and just see if I can dye it but I don't know whether that would take across the spots um very well you know would would i still see shadows of the spots afterwards i don't know i would be interested to hear your thoughts if you've ever dyed a garment before and let me know what you think um but yeah absolutely love it and being a full circle skirt the twirl on it is immense <laughs> so from a it's very rock and roll feel i think like when i used to do ballroom dancing i would have loved to have danced in that dress Okay, so what else to show you? Um, also for the window display, after the um, Betty dress came out, um, I have replaced it with this lovely pink sky dress. Um, so this is another Tilly and the Buttons pattern. This is the sky. Um, I've made this pattern before. Uh, last year I made it in the size four in viscose and I, I do wear that quite regularly, but I tend to wear it with uh, like a white t-shirt underneath. Um, but I decided to make a 
a five this time just to make it that bit looser as I was explaining with like being between sizes sky is designed to be worn sort of quite loose and breezy so I decided to go with a five for that one um, and I have used my pink tie-dye brodery anglaise since <laughs> since I posted that I was working with this fabric it has sold out but I do still have it in the green colourway, in the lime green, which is equally as lovely. Um, so I'm going to be popping this one out of the window at the end of the week and taking it on holiday with me. Um, but yes, very pleased with that. I'll have popped some footage in for you to see it actually being worn. Um, Sky's a great dress for a beginner. Um, again, no closures. She, again, she says confident beginners on it. Um, no zips, no buttons. You get to use a bit of bias binding in fact in the pattern it takes you through making your own bias binding on this occasion I didn't make it out of the fabric itself because with having the holes in I just preferred to use some of the cotton bias binding that I have in stock however if I was to make this again um, I think and I remember thinking this last time that instead of putting bias tape around the armholes and the neckline I would simply just make second front and back bodice and and join them together and essentially just line the bodice especially if we have a fine fabric like a viscose um, I couldn't do it with this brodery because I don't think it would look right if the holes were sort of backed off I don't think that would have worked so I had to do the bias but yeah I would consider just self lining the bodice if you were making your sky but yes love it very comfy and again something really really useful for the summer wardrobe mm. oh right <laughs> uh, what next well on Mandy's head we have a hat <laughs> um, this was a really fun project and it's actually inside out at the moment technically let me turn it the right way out um, so I had a piece of this linen blend um, left over from a dress that I made not last summer, the summer before. So, um, so yeah, obviously I don't have that fabric now as it's just a scrap. Um, a hat is a great way to scrap bust and this project basically came about because the new Simplicity catalogue came into the shop and it had quite a few sort of craft projects in it I think basically simplicity and moving some bits and pieces some designs out of the quick sew catalog into the simplicity catalog so this is an X quick sew pattern I know that because it's got the numbers still on the tissue um, and this is simplicity 9509 and you've got four hat designs on this pattern now to be entirely honest with you you can get a number of free bucket hat patterns online I'm aware of that but I wanted to work with one from the book because simply because customers come in and they say oh, please can I buy the pattern and yeah it's just nice to be able to tell them one that I've made so you can see this is the medium <laughs> um so technically I've used the the linen to line this hat and the main fabric itself is a is red cotton drill so I only used half a metre of each uh, fabric. Um, if you follow the pattern instructions directly, it only has the inside here. Oh, what's the word? The crown and the top lined. And then this bit should be in the same as your outer fabric. But I decided I wanted that visible. So I did the brim in the lining fabric as well which has the added, added benefit of really making it fully reversible but yeah this was just so much fun it, it didn't take me long to make it, it was just it was just fun and sometimes that's what you need isn't it just a bit of light relief but yeah it's cute I like it I, I don't know how to fold that up but it's quite quite a wide brim for a bucket hat and bucket hats seem to they seem to be back in as a all things 90s except I won't be wearing mine raving in a field <laughs> there you go so moving swiftly on because it feels like I've got quite a lot to show you today um this one is 
Ta-da! This one was in my plans video last time. This is the Megan Nielsen Darling Ranges blouse. Now then, if you follow me on Instagram, I feel like I'm saying this all the time, or on TikTok, you'll have seen the process of me making this because I made it in several 30 minute sessions because um, I was really struggling for sewing time at the time and I kind of wanted to challenge myself to break it down into manageable chunks and a lot of you enjoyed that format I certainly enjoyed that format and I have been keeping up with not necessarily setting the timer and doing 30 minutes a day but it's definitely been a takeaway in terms of making myself stop and just do a short chunk instead of expecting have lots of available sewing time so this is a finished blouse um i've made the dress version of this before so i'm very happy with it this is the eucalyptus double gauze i have worn it every week since i made it it's just lovely and the beauty of double gauze is that once you wash it it just returns to that crinkly state and you don't need to iron it it's fab um, but it is basically the closest thing to wearing a cloud. Now, <laughs> sadly, um, the eucalyptus has all gone. This tends to be the case. If I say I'm sewing with a fabric, it tends to sell out quite quickly. Um, but I do have a number of plain double gauzes, so I'll leave a link to the double gauze section down below. But yeah, I won't go on and on about that one. But yes, a nice little... I don't know where to put it now there we go <laughs> nice little wardrobe staple um and speaking of wardrobe staples something that i've made this week um very quickly yesterday in fact is the true bias ogden cami um now this one has been in the sewing community for a long long time it's a bit of a cult classic it's um sort of tried and tested by a lot of people except me so I bought the Ogden pattern years ago now, before I had the shop, and I made it up and I must have selected the wrong size because it was too tight across the bust, so I kind of shelved it, got in a huff, moved on. So I decided to revisit it this week. Um, so this is a toile, which I've made up in... This is a polyester fabric, which I don't stock. It's something that's been sat in my loft, so I'm afraid I can't give you a link to that particular fabric. Um, but it has turned out to be a wearable toile. I've made, oh, which size is this? Because the true bias sizing's a bit different. I think it's a 12, but if I'm wrong, I will, I will put a note below. Um, so again, I went off my measurements and yet, yeah, entirely wearable i'll pop a picture of it on um so my thoughts on this one obviously it's not got a dart in it it's very sort of loose and breezy fitting which is what i wanted um but i think on reflection i think it's lifting a bit on the front and i've been looking at other people's pictures and on the pictures on the pattern cover and i kind of can't determine whether the back is dipped and the front is straight i'm not sure if that's the right fit but then i found that since i bought my copy a few years ago true bias are now doing um, an extended size range which is darted and has a different cup size so i feel like i maybe need to look into that and see whether there's a different option for me there however this is entirely wearable and it's nice tucked in and i do have a piece of this fabric left just over a meter so I was thinking of maybe just making like an elasticated waist skirt that I could tuck it into to make a two-piece but yep yeah, it's wearable on its own I'm interested in winter in making this in sequins and lining the bodice and I think that could be really really nice hold that thought <laughs> so that's the Ogden cami and I will pop a link below to the pattern for that one and finally the last thing to talk about is my lovely denim jacket the pièce de résistance i'm not going to go all the way back through the denim jacket again if you check back on my most recent video you will see all about the making of the denim jacket it is the sew over it's sorrento and it's made in my yarn dyed stretch denim in rose pink or is it soft rose i can't remember um but that particular denim comes in a few different colors 
and I'm absolutely in love with it. I think it's one of the best things I've ever made and it coordinates so well with with this particular outfit. Um, it goes well with this. It, it just goes with so many things. It's just my style altogether. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed having a look at all those items. There was quite a lot there when I put it all together. Um, I'm just really, really happy with the things that I've made. I've been making really wearable, basic wardrobe staples and that that is what it's all about for me. <laughs> um, let me know what you think, which your favourites were. I'm going to have a think about what I'm going to make next whilst I'm away on my holidays. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all good and I will see you when I get back. Take care, happy sewing and thank you for tuning in. If you did like this video, please do like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me um, because recently I noticed that we've gone over 2,000 subscribers so that's fantastic. Thank you everybody. You take care and I will see you soon. Bye bye.